So we're going to talk about abiding in Jesus Christ. Yes. And him living in us and us living in him. And if we don't, you're pushed out as a branch, but then you wither because you're not really connected to Jesus. That's right. So basically, the whole point of Jesus Christ is this, that he is light and he's not darkness. He's love and he's not hate. Well, God hate, but he hate sin, sin. sin. evil. And uh, the whole point of Jesus is that the whole character of Jesus is built up within his word. And if a Christian or someone that claimed to be a, uh, a follower of Christ and is not abiding in him, he will be cast forth. He has moved away from the, 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 the real uh, vine. Because the vine is that uh, uh, thing that uh, is a, give the substance to the tree. Without the vine, there will be no uh, nutrient that actually goes from the soil to the tree. There's, the connection is actually cut off. So uh, Jesus is saying, you need to be connected to me. Because all the revelation that you need is in me. All the life that you need is in me. All the light you need is in me. Everything that you need is in me. Because it's the same John 15 says that apart from me, you can do nothing. And nothing means nothing. We, in him we live, we move, and have our being. So without Christ, you are basically... Uh, a rebellious person without Christ, Jesus Christ, you are definitely not a part of him. He is life, he is light, he is the word, he is the water, he is the vine, he is the bread, he is the I am that I am, whatever he is, he is, he is God. And so if you are not in him and if you are not obeying him, you are deserving to be burned and to go into hell. It's just like someone that uh, is so rebellious, you're coming out of the natural part of your habitat. You're so, um, you're not natural. It's, it's, it's against the law of nature. You're not loving, you're not kind, you're not gentle, you're not peaceful, you're not patient, you're like Cain that killed his brother, you're like, you know, uh, you, you know, you love money and pleasure, then you don't have love, you have religion and you're, you're an hypocrite. And, and so you're not uh, supposed to be in the perimeter of God's word because you have rebelled against it and as a result, you are no more welcome into the family of God. And he said, I am going to cut you off and I'm going to throw you away because you're not repenting. You're not turning away. You're not loving as you should. You're not abiding in the very word that you've read. You're rebellious. And he said, I'm going to cut you off and I'm going to throw you into hell. But Raymond, what you've just described sounds like so many church people from so many congregations in so many countries around the world. Well, Jesus said that uh, we have forgotten that the way was narrow. So is it then that a person could actually be cast forth as a branch, could wither, could become a hypocrite, could become an empty, dead life and just be gathered? So you could be gathered into what, a congregation somewhere? You could be gathered together, but not alive in Jesus Christ? Is, is, is this too much for me to say? Well, it's, it's funny that you're saying that gathered because, to be honest... Well, he said men gathered. Yeah. To, 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 and then they're burned. That's so right. Because they, the, that's what I'm saying. You see, the gathering of sticks makes the bigger fire. So, <laughs> that's why I like to be the eagle that fly alone because, you see, I'm not easily lit. Okay. I'm easily... Uh, <laughs> <All right. Okay. laughs> you see, no. too, too, too many people, when people gather, you see all these mega churches that has... Uh, so many members gathering on Sunday morning and they are feeding on the wrong teachings and they are not finding it necessary 
to repent and turn to God. They believe their pastor, they believe a man, they believe some theology, and they are not reading the word of God and trusting in the Holy Spirit, believing what the Holy Spirit is saying. I'm saying Satan is gathering you to burn you in hell. So I'm just saying, please, ladies and gentlemen, you're hearing this and it's a wake up call. Stop gathering yourself in all these community centers and in all these big mega churches that people just think that once saved, always saved. It's a gathering and he's gathering you to burn you in hell. Make sure that you are separated to God. Find out the word of God. And I must interject and say, there are churches that gather and are preaching the word of God. And it means they are preaching repentance and holiness and justification and a clean heart. And then they're trembling at God's word and they will never preach things that is against God's word. So be careful uh, who you're gathering, where you're gathering, because it just might be a bigger fire. With a bigger barn. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just looking for the scripture. It talks about wide is the road that leads Matthew seven to destruction. So it's Matthew chapter seven, and let's have a quick look. Yeah, it's Matthew. Yes, here we go. Matthew chapter seven, Matthew chapter seven, verse thirteen. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. But every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits Mm -hmm. you shall know them. Yeah, well, um, the first fruit we should bear is the fruit of repentance. And when someone begins to uh, bear the fruit of repentance then, uh, you know, other fruit will come. The fruit of the Spirit will come. Love, joy, peace, patience, and goodness, temperance, faith, and uh, all of that will come in them. Okay. But, just... but the, the gate is wide, and not because a lot of people... You see, people, Alfred, take comfort in numbers, and it's always good. Uh, I think it's, it's quite easy when people um, do that, take comfort in numbers. The more the people is the more comfortable we are. And people even are rebellious to say that, okay, we are going to overthrow God because everybody is doing it. The religious spirit said, okay, everybody is doing it. Everybody, you know, this is how church is. And, but they, don't, they have forgotten that the way was narrow. And it's narrow. It's not you and somebody else come go through it. It's you and God. You must have a revelation of your God. So you must have accepted Jesus you Christ as your personal as your Lord personal and Savior. Savior. Your personal Lord. He is your Lord. He tells you what to do. You do it. He's your Lord. You're not supposed to follow the bishop or the leadership of a church. You need to follow Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm going to read just a few verses and then we'll go into the next section because... The last going, section. Right? Mm. So it says here... Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these saints of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, 
and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. We will come back and we'll talk about the great falling of the religious church. See you later.